Hey, what is up guys? In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Runcam 3S. And what we're going to do is we're going to see the flight footage between all these three. So this is the GoPro Session 5. We have the Hawkeye Firefly 8S and the Runcam 3S. Now, this video is about the Runcam 3S, but we will be seeing flight footage of similar flights on the same day within the same hour on each of these cameras with the same routine so you can get an idea. Now, what I've noticed is on my previous upload when I tested these two against each other that YouTube's processing really annihilates the pictures. So hopefully this time I have a better way to transcode these and these should come out great. If not, I'll have the raw video files posted on my forum. Now for my personal preference, I do notice on the raw videos on, we're talking about 1080p 60 frames a second. I really like the Firefly's uh, colors and, and just, just the way the overall image looks like. However, what I've noticed is the Firefly and the Runcam are susceptible to jelloing unlike the GoPro. But again, in these two, I had to print PLA mounts, which means that it's very hard plastic, as you can tell here. And this one, I had a TPU mount. So I'm redesigning a TPU mount for this one and a TPU mount for this one on the same quadcopter for another flight. And I'm also building a camera drone with a gimbal to test these out, how good these will be in the upcoming videos. But currently we're talking about FPV related flight footage here. Now for quadcopter, I use the Hollybro Copus 2 and uh, it was just, that's, that's my main quad to test things on of this nature, which I'm really enjoying. I'm really loving that quadcopter. So let's talk about some of the specs here. Now the run cam here does have an application you can connect to and it does have Wi-Fi built in. However, what I've noticed is the fact that it can only go up to 1080p at 60 frames a second, which is plenty enough. But for example, the Firefly and the Hero, they both go up to 4K, which is really good to see here. But this one, you're gonna be maxing out at 1080p, 60 frames a second. This is this is exactly anyways what I use on these two for my FPV quadcopters. Another really nice feature about the run cam here, what I've noticed is it does have a removable battery bay. So you can remove the battery, but the SD card location is really kind of annoying and also the door here as you can tell you can possibly lose this easily they don't provide a spare here so take that into consideration so you can easily remove the battery and replace it if you wanted to it's a 3.7 volt 850 milliamp battery here as you can tell which is really nice that it's removable and the SD card would be slot in right there it was actually kind of difficult to notice that in the beginning but it goes right there so just be careful not to put it in anywhere by mistake here so that's just a weird design that they've, they've come up with I guess it's because of the lawsuit with uh, GoPro when they had little issues going on with the first 3S. I truly believe it's still the same internals, but what they did differently now is they've completely changed the sides. As you can tell here, the, the complete size has changed. Uh, it's a little bit larger than the GoPro, so anything that fit the GoPro will not fit this. Even a TPU mount would not fit this because it's, it is noticeably bigger here. Using the application, it was just absolutely good. It worked really great. However, I did have an issue trying to turn on the Bluetooth, I mean the, the Wi-Fi, because it's not really that obvious. And for some reason, this light does not turn blue for me. Last time I checked, maybe it was just because it was dead, but I did have that issue. So another unique little feature or something that I really like that they've added is this here. So this is a micro USB to a video output as well as uh, a five volt in to get it charged, which is really nice to see here. So what you do is, for example, you had a quad with a gimbal or some kind of a fixed wing. You can pipe the video feed down to your VTX through this, which is really nice. And at the same time, keeping it charged, but you do not get controls such as through PWM to control this, to enable it to record or to stop the recording. So you're just gonna have to record and just fly and hope it's recording. However, with the Firefly, you can get a wire here that you can plug in, and I did purchase it, and um, it's here right now. We're gonna be testing it later, which gives you the, the, the output, it gives you the video output. It also gives you PWM to control start recording or even take pictures. And it also has a voltage regulator on board, which takes up to a 6S and you can just put raw battery voltage in there and it'll get it charged, which I think is really amazing. This is a great deal and it comes with a lot of things. So this is a huge, you know, it's, it's, it's a really nice action camera. I'm really loving it. I have two of them now. I have the 8S and the 8SE. However, if you're into the box type, this is gonna do the job. Plus the wide dynamic range is better than these two together to be honest uh, because if you're gonna see the flight footage you'll see on the points where I look at the Sun look it down with this one you think I'm just stupid I don't know what the hell I'm doing but with these you could kind of see okay uh, he's testing the sunlight but here it was just really nice the dynamic range on this was absolutely beautiful and it was just really good but the overall quality feels a bit washed out on this one on this one it feels more vivid 
and this one is just right there in the middle and like I mentioned these two are really prone to jelloing it's not that bad but then again I can't really just answer that just yet because I did use PLA mounts and I'm currently printing the TPU mounts for this I've designed a TPU mount for a Hollybro Copus for this one if you want to get the prototype before it goes up on Thingiverse it is on my forum in the 3d printing section so overall the camera this camera actually did really well for the price it's it's really good but also you know you when you think about it, you can go get a gopro uh session for refurbished for around the same price then you know um i don't know what you would pick up now i don't know if it's a re if you get a refurbished from gopro they still keep that warranty because what's so cool about gopro is no matter how many of them i broke except losing i uh, just wrote them and then they just come just dhl or ups would come pick it up free of charge and they send me a new one within two weeks. So that's something that I really loved about GoPro. However, with this, you're not gonna see that. And I don't know how easy it is to find a spare parts for this, so keep that in mind also. Same thing goes for this one. So here you're paying a little bit more, but you're getting a lot more in terms of the back-end customer service. But this is still a good overall cheap solution. And um, yeah, it should be pretty good. I'll be using it in the upcoming videos and uh, we'll see how well this goes. And well, that's gonna include it for my review of the Roncam 3S. And now I'm gonna leave you guys with the flight footage and I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.